Welcome to the InfluxDB Cloud Serverless UI Tour. This is going to be a quick tour of the basics of InfluxDB Cloud Serverless, the new uh, 3.0 version of InfluxDB in the cloud. Uh, InfluxDB Cloud Serverless is a fully managed, elastic version of InfluxDB. It's free to try, so it's great for those uh, MVP projects or just trying to figure out viability, uh, you know, how you're going to use InfluxDB. You pay only for what you use, so there's some uh, reassurance in that. Um, but I'm doing this tour because uh, this is the new version, like I said, the 3.0 version. And so we want to make sure that folks uh, know where things are, understand what's in the UI, uh, especially if, if you're uh, uh, new to it or you're, you're familiar with an older version, uh, some things have changed. So I want to make sure everybody is on the same page. So the things I'm going to uh, cover today are just really quickly are sort of the basics, uh, where things are, uh, uh, your data ingest options, your data querying options, uh, and we're going to talk about visualization just really quickly. Okay, so with that, let's jump into the UI. Okay, here we are in the InfluxDB Cloud Serverless user interface. You'll notice right off the bat that we've got on the left, uh, I'm sorry, on the right hand side here, we've got uh, a, a news ticker and, a, and the latest blogs from InfluxDB. We've got some quick start options here in the middle. And then on the left, we have this, this menu. And if we click here at the bottom, we can expand that and see um, what exactly that entails. Now, uh, the basics for InfluxDB, uh, we're going to talk about buckets, tokens, and where to find your org ID. So first of all, with finding your org ID up here, this is our organization. For me, it's called marketing. I'm going to click on settings. And then when I go to settings, I'm going to see the cluster URL, which you need for API calls, usually in other configurations. Uh, so that's going to be right here, that URL, and also the organization ID. That's another common one that you'll need. Okay. If you have multiple members in your organization, you can see them listed here. And if you want to get a, a sense of the raw uh, monthly usage um, for your for your instance, you can see that here as well. Okay. Uh, the other thing you, you might you might need, like I said, we've got the the URL and the organiz organization ID. You might need an API token. So to get to that, we can go to load data and go to API tokens, and you can create a I generate an API token here, either an all access or a custom one. And then we just put a test name in there, save it, and there you go. There's your there's your token, right? We can also just delete that if you need to. Okay, so API tokens are one of the basics. The other uh oh, one one of the others is um uh, buckets. So buckets are where you store your actual data. So you can create a new bucket. You can see I've already got one here, which we'll jump into in a second, but create a bucket. Again, the same thing. Give it a name, just choose your um, data retention preference, and hit create, and there's our there's our test bucket. Okay. All right. So buckets are where we put data, API tokens, and the uh, org org ID or how we help configure things uh, to get data in. Let's go back to the main the main um, page here, right? So to to add data, we have, we have a few options. You can upload C CSV or line protocol. You can use the InfluxDB command line interface, the CLI, or the, our API. And we have a selection of client libraries that you can choose from. For example, Python. Click on that. Will you even get a uh, quick quick setup guide for 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 some of these? Okay. Uh, the other big one that we have here, getting back, is is Telegraph. So uh, you can see here you can, can configure an agent. You can create a new configuration and you can look at all, select the bucket that you want to pull the data from or the bu bucket you want to work with. And then whatever, whatever uh, plugins you need, you can add those into a configuration. Okay. So that's getting data in. Again, if the sources tab here, you can see all the options. We got file upload, client libraries, and this whole, whole bevy of Telegraph plugins. Okay. So that's getting data in. Uh, if you want to query data, we have a few options as well. Actually, let's go back to let's go back to here. It's querying data, right? So we can see the we again we have API access, we have client library access uh, with uh, Go and Python at the moment, and though that's going to continue to uh, grow that list. And we also have the data explorer, so we can go click either here or over on the left hand side. Okay, so here we are in the data explorer. So I, I'm going to choose my data uh, is in my air sensors bucket. 
All right, so I have air sensors there, and I'm gonna actually I'm gonna turn on this the SQL sync function here, and you can see it's already uh, composing uh, code based on what I select over here. So I'm gonna select my air sensor um, uh, measurement, and I see I have some options here. I can either go look at the specific uh, um, sensor, or I can just look at uh, broader things like humidity. I'm not, not not really a big fan of humidity, so let's see if this gives us anything. Aha. Uh -huh. So we can see here that um, we're able to run it, and we see the, these these humidity, um, right? But if you also want to, you can also turn that off, and you can go in here and say, let's say humidity is um, greater than thirty-four, right? And we can run that, see, and we can see that our query ran. We have a different number of rows now, and we can now we can go on. If we want to do more over here, we can actually start, you know, adding to that. But so you you can turn the sync on and off and and compose as you go. Okay, so that's um, the uh, this is sort of your schema browser, right? This is the the uh, the field for 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 editing the editing the code, and then we also have this table view down here. We all can also uh, graph it. You can see here we have a, a number of different uh, visualization options, and you can do some modifications over here to get it to look how you want. OK, now there is no dashboarding with uh, the, the new 3.0 uh, user interface, but uh, we do support third-party tools. You can use uh, Grafana. Uh, we have a Flight SQL plugin for that 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 will uh, let you query your data with uh, 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 SQL into uh, Grafana. We also support uh, Apache Superset, so definitely check out our docs around that. And then, um, like I said, Flight SQL is our, is our big one here. We'll go into a visualization. You can see Grafana. We have um, you can click click on that and see our documentation about. Uh, connecting to Grafana, here doc documentation connecting to Superset. Um, and we have, like I said, we connect through Flight SQL. Uh, and we have, I know we have JDBC compatibility forthcoming. So that's, um, oh yeah, and if, if you need to create some labels or some secrets, you can do that in, this, in the settings um, section here. But that's the, the basic lay of the land of InfluxDB Cloud Serverless. Um, I hope this, hope this is useful for you. Um, so if you uh, need anything else, uh, need, need more support, check out our documentation or join our one of our communities like on Slack or on our forum, uh, and we can help you out with, with, with more. So thank you for uh, your attention and hope this was useful. We can't wait to see what you build.